So as you mentioned, in your life and your profession, you were used to interact with people, friends, colleagues, partners, let's say communities around you, which was actually totally normal to us. We never had to question. Um, do you think the communal experience has changed recently? And how has this influenced your perspectives towards the idea of communities? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it has uh, changed a lot. I, w I would say it's the core of my work that uh, we really try to connect people, that we need a personal basis for interaction. And I think before the pandemic, I had three, four evenings per week when I went to receptions. Networking is the, the key word in our field. So I haven't been to any reception for almost two years now. I haven't been traveling. It's also a lot about traveling. About traveling. But there are also unexpected uh, developments because um, we had to adapt to the situation as everybody had. And so we switched to online formats. My foundation, we were among the first ones and uh, it worked differently than, than expected. I think uh, the, first time, the first time we really got... Uh, Lots of response and uh, participation and so on. Uh, what I can see is uh, some kind of an online fatigue among certain target groups. But uh, what I can also see is that we reach other people than we used to reach. Because those, like, for example, from remote areas or those who cannot make it to come to Seoul when we organize a conference or whatever, now we can reach them. And of course, this is very lucky. But when it comes to really the deeper connections, building of trust, things like this, and just having a beer together after the conference or a dinner, these are things we are really missing. And uh, this has changed our work, our interaction fundamentally. The personal aspect is missing. I think uh, the German church here in Korea It's very lucky that Hans is now here. Um, so I know that in these pandemic times, also the church had to find new formats and um, uh, the um, prayers and all events are now also held online. And I'm very much looking forward to the new vibe that you will bring in to the worships. Um, do you think the communal experience has changed recently? And how has this influenced your perspectives? towards the idea of communities? Uh, through this pandemic, um, we have to figure out how to get in touch and stay in contact with people. I'm not the guy who can make a phone call so long, even with my wife or my family. After five minutes, it's hard for me. So we, um, we developed um, uh, meetings online. So we made Zoom calls where we eat together and where we pray together and uh, have even worships together per, uh, per Zoom because um, there's no other ways or there were no other ways. And yeah, I missed these times, but I see there um, are new opportunities to become out, to get together. Yeah, I think it's um, very thrilling to hear like how things had to be changed and uh, were done. And I think, Hans, you also try to find new formats, how to bring people together. Um, also having in mind what is what, yeah, is more um, touching the, the young people. And um, I think we will show now a video of something that you made in the past. When was this made? Um, I think that was made in February. This year. Um, yeah, the video was made in February about the project um, itself. Um, um, was uh, last year in June. Ah, would you maybe describe a bit more on the project? What was the general idea? Yeah, the general idea of um, our project was um, to get younger people um, in touch um, with um, our um, parish and um, especially our worships. So we find uh, found out. Oh, oh, it's it the way the average um, German Lutheran worship is at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. 
and the average teenager and maybe some adults um, sleep at this time. And we think about um, the music in our um, worships. Um, in Germany and Lutheran Church, we use classical music like Bach and Tom Gerhardt. And um, that is beautiful music and beautiful music for um, a traditional crowd. Uh, but we think, okay, maybe we can do a um, little bit more. So um, the whole idea started uh, when we um, are in, it's called a it vicar class. So it, I make an apprenticeship to become a reverend. And so we have classes um, in an old monastery in Ratzeburg. And yeah, we are all young adults and starting the whole day talking about God and the world and Jesus and at the evening we want um, yeah to make party and some bring boom boxes and other guys bring lights and some drinks and yeah we were celebrating in these uh, old halls of this monastery and um, me and my uh, colleague um, Johanna Lemke Oberem um, she is a reverend uh, she's also a reverend in the northern church and um, we talked about Let's think about preaching over this house beat. And we, we try it out and to look um, how it feels like. Okay. And it wasn't that weird. Okay. We think it's, it fits. Okay, maybe we have a look first and then we continue <laughs> to talk what was more behind it. unseres Herrn Jesus Christus, die Liebe Gottes und die Gemeinschaft des Heiligen Geistes sei mit euch allen. Amen. Even my papers are so fascinated that they flew away. Thank you very much. Wow. I'm very impressed. <laughs> the video you saw um, was even from Vicar class. So um, the task was how you um, imagine your style of being a reverend or how you imagine um, your style um, to make um, the church um, of the future. And we think about, okay, um, how it would feel like to go a worship like this. Um, to say uh, we don't make a worship, um, we celebrate a worship. We celebrate um, to get in touch with God and with his love and yeah, um, share this love. And although our main idea was um, to make mod um, contemporary mu music for worships is not, is not a modern idea. Even Martin Luther Even he said, okay, let's use contemporary music to get the people uh, more in touch with our message. So the message doesn't change for 2,000 years. God is love. But um, to, the, the, the ways to express those matches change over the decades. <laughs> 